Amen. 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 First Chronicles chapter 29, verses 11 to 13 states, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over them. In your hand are power and might, and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now, we thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. Isn't it great that God, in his sovereignty, and by way of his providence, has allowed for us, his people, to leave our places of abode. Or by way of the World Wide Web, having left a chore or two, having lifted us out of our slumber to come before him on this, his Lord's Day, to lift up his name. There are so many things going on across the world today. So many troubles that attend humanity. But in the midst of all that is happening around us and to us and in us, he would have us to pause long enough to say thank you. To always have at the forefront of our minds himself, our Lord God, who continues to supply, to support, and to sustain. Right where we are, let us pause briefly as we reflect upon the week that has passed. Let us reflect on his goodness and his grace. Let us reflect on who he is and what he means to us as we come together, both near and far, to lift up the name of our God. My faith has found a resting place. Not in a man-made creed. I trust the ever-living one that he for me shall plead. I need no other evidence. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. Shall we stand? Stand where you are and let us sing together this beautiful hymn. Easy. 
is resting on the word. My soul is resting on this comes the word. In the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. If we know that he is our Lord and Savior, let us join our hearts, our voices together, and let us sing it lustily indeed. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, to glory he sheds on our way while we do his good he abides he abides with us and with all and with all who will trust and do trust and obey trust and obey for there's no to trust and oh not a shadow can rise not a shadow can not a cloud not a cloud in the but he smiles but he smiles he drives it away not a doubt or a fear not a sigh or a tear can abide can abide Trust and obey, trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey, not a burden, not a burden we, not a sorrow we share, but our toil, but our toil Not a grief or a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey, trust and obey, oh, trust and obey. can prove but we never can the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay for the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey will trust and obey Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. 
fellowship. Then in fellowship, we will sit at his feet. Or we'll walk by his side in the way. Side in the way. So until then, what he says, what he says, we where he sends, he will go. Never fear, never fear. That we have the evidence not only in our hearts, but more so flowing from your word. Your evidence speaks strongly to us. We trust you above all else, above anyone else. We trust you. In black and white, Lord, it is clearly written. And indeed, Lord, it has been placed upon our hearts and reminded again and again by your Holy Spirit. And in this wonderful hymn, as we have gone through life's journey and we end in heaven, this hymn states, it will indeed be fellowship sweet when we sit at your feet or we walk with you in the way. Until then, Lord, we will go where you send us. And indeed, Lord, we will say what you tell us as your word has declared. Let us not fear, Lord, for you have not given us a spirit of fear, but trust and obey. Lord, we pray that as you have brought us into your house this morning, that you would cause our hearts to be filled with joy and overflowing. Lord, we could have been elsewhere. We could have gone the way of all flesh. Lord, so much could have befallen us this week. And indeed, so much has, happen has happened. The challenges of life which have impacted us and invaded us. Yet, Lord, you have been so gracious to us to give us life again, to, to draw breath again, to have our minds clothed, Lord, indeed, with our sensibilities, to be mobile, Lord. And even though we do not have 100% health and strength, at least we have a measure that you have given to us. And so, Father, as we have come two and three, we ask that your presence be in our midst Indeed, Lord, that we will be blessed. And, and even as we prepare for your word from your manservant, no doubt, Lord, when the rebuke comes, when the admonition comes, when the encouragement comes, may we look to you. For indeed, when they come, we know it comes from you. It comes from your word. It flows from your servant. And you should be and will be glorified and honored in every way possible as we give you thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing as we sing the hymn, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. This is one of those hymns that, that calls for us to be reflective. As we sing every word, may we be so focused on the Lord that we sing from our hearts and we give him glory and praise. My faith looks up to thee.
I tread and griefs around me spread be thou my guide bid darkness turn to day wipe sorrows tears away nor let me ever stray transient dream until death's sullen stream shall o'er me roll blessing with thy back and with has caused us, at least myself, to hold firmly to this verse. For indeed, as I tread this dark maze, and the griefs around spread, we need the guidance of our Lord. I encourage you as you sit and you are ministered to, now by our brother Phil Dennis, as he shares God's word through song. My prayer for you is that you reach out to your God and allow him to lead you in this time of challenge. Brother Phil. As our brother Phil prepares, I want to encourage you also to be in prayer for our speaker, Dr. Daniel Thomas. Pray him up real good and ask the Lord to loosen his tongue and may his heart speak the word of the Lord as he has imbibed it. And may we be blessed by the ministry that he will release to us today. Brother Phil. I will trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. In 
all my ways I acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. I will honor the Lord with all my goods, and with the first fruit of the increase. So shall my barn be filled with much, and my presses shall burst with wine. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not to my own understanding. All thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. In all, O oh Lord, acknowledge him, the first fruit of our increase. So shall my barn be filled with much. And my presage shall burst with wine. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. But in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he trust in the Lord, hallelujah. Trust in the Lord, with all thy heart, and lean not. Hallelujah. Stand, but in all thy ways, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Hallelujah. And he shall direct thy path. Trust in the Lord. Song is what we need to do. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Stand, but in all thy ways, acknowledge, acknowledge him, and he shall. Oh! 
trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct sing it prayerful again trust in the Lord Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. But in all thy ways acknowledge him and he sing it again. We're going through a lot. You may not understand what you're going through, but God knows, and you trust in the Lord with all your understanding. You may not understand COVID. You may not understand all he's dead. You may not understand your family problem, but trust in the Lord. And in all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he shall Good morning, church. Good morning again, church. Good morning. It's truly great to be in the house of the Lord. Wonderful. It is really an honor to be here. And I bring greetings on behalf of my wife and our, our baby boy, who is now 10 months old. God is good. You know, I really wanted them to come this morning, but wifey wasn't feeling so well, and I realized that I couldn't push it, so... You know, but it's, it's really great um, that I was able to make it, and I'm here. I'm excited. Um, I've been greetings on behalf of my parents as well, and um, that's Dr. Donovan Thomas and Mrs. Faith Thomas, and also my church family. And also the Love March movement. Um, you guys have supported us so much. We really appreciate it. Rev, we appreciate you so much. You're such a, yeah, such a huge encouragement. Yeah, man, so I just wanted to greet on behalf of the team as well. This morning, the theme that I've been given and the theme of this time period here at Calvary is trusting God in trying times. That will be the theme that I will bring the word on this morning. And the passage that I'll be speaking from is Daniel chapter 3, verses 7 to 18. So that's the passage that I'll be reading now. Daniel chapter 3, verses 7 to 18. Therefore, 
As soon as they heard the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, and all kinds of musical instruments, all the peoples, nations, and men of every language fell down and worshipped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You have issued a decree, O king, that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold, and that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, O king. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So, they, so these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? No, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, will, if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. This is the word of the Lord. O oh Lord, would you come now, Holy Spirit? Speak through me, Lord God, this very hour. Perform the miracle of preaching. Move, Lord God, on our hearts as we seek to engage in your word, to hear what you have to say, Lord God. Cause, Lord God, that I would be a glove to you, that it would not be me speaking, but that you would speak through me and challenge our hearts, Lord God, to trust you more in trying times, in Jesus' name, amen. From the very first prophetic decree in Scripture, in Genesis 3, 15, and that prophetic decree reads hence, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers, and he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. From that very first decree, engage an intergenerational conflict. A war between the seed of the offspring of the woman, well, the seed slash the offspring of the woman, and the seed or the offspring of Satan. This is a war that has gone on from generation to generation, where the children of God are up against those who stand to be conduits of the enemy's plans and the kingdom of darkness. You can think through the generations and see that many antichrists have come before, right? Haman was a type of an antichrist who wanted a decree to be set up that all the Jews would be killed. We see in our passage Nebuchadnezzar in that, that kind of situation as well. Setting rules that run an entire world against God. There's a guy by the name of Antiochus Epiphanes about 200 years before Jesus came into the world physically. He represents a significant type of antichrist that actually fulfills a number of things that the antichrist, the real one, will fulfill and to a great and fuller extent. Then there are persons like Nero, persecuting the disciples, burning the churches, 
raging against God. And you could put in that category of persons like Hitler as well. A type of antichrist raising up laws against God, against the people of God, moving to destroy the work of God and to kill the people of God. As time progresses, what we see in the word is that trying times will increase. There is an escalation described in the Bible. This is the background of our discussion this morning on trying times and trusting God in trying times. There is an escalation described in the Bible and the best analogy is that of a pregnant woman. During the seventh and the eighth month, I don't know which month we are in right now, probably somewhere there. You know, things become to get a bit more uncomfortable. The legs start to swell. There are some trying, there are some little difficulties that start to come up. But there is the understanding that this is going to be nothing in comparison to what is to come. The actual labor pain. And actually getting closer to the ninth month. Getting closer to the time when the baby is ready to jump out. There are some other little types of contractions called Braxton Hicks and the mother is now wondering, is this the contraction? Is this it? Because there's some amount of pain. There's some amount of, of, of contraction taking place. And there's always this anticipation that there's a great pain about to come. Jesus, in teaching about this time period, notes in Matthew 24, there will be famine and earthquakes. There will be great deception and betrayal. Hearts will grow cold. There will be wars and rumors of wars, false prophets and false saviors. These are the beginning of birth pains. Matthew 24, 20, Matthew 24 verse 9 to 13 actually reads, You will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. You will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. And so Jesus himself is painting a picture of an escalation of great trial. A time period that cannot be compared to any other time period, he said. Can you imagine? Not World War I, not World War II. No time period in all of history can compare to the trial that is to come. Jesus said in Matthew 24. But he notes that amidst all kinds of falling away, all kinds of deception, all kinds of wars and abuses and and false teachings and all kinds of things, he who stands firm to the end will be saved. I want to encourage us this morning that that kind of endurance, standing firm to the end, that kind of fruit that is the product of an internal condition of trust in the Lord. It is those who trust in the Lord through the difficulties and the trials who will endure. Endurance is the product of trust. Jesus goes through a very detailed and clear description of the time period that is to come. And his goal is that of preparedness. That we would know what's going to happen. And to some extent when it will happen. The sequence of events that will happen. And also what is required of us. And that is endurance. And so our passage in Matthew, in, in Daniel rather chapter 3. Is a microcosm. It is a, a, a snippet. It is a picture of a, a huge 
trial. A significant moment in history where there is a serious set of trying times. The children of Israel are in bondage. Interestingly, we see the three Hebrew boys, and you know, there were many Hebrews, you know, there were many, many Hebrews, but only these three stood up. We see the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Mishkan, and Abednego, in the context of mandatory idolatry. The context of a one world government. The context of an efficient reporting system that anybody who disobeyed, the king would hear about it. We see in verse 7, men of every language and every nation bow down to this statue. It is a setting of mass capitulation, mass compliance with evil. And it is a setting of prideful leadership. Prideful government leadership. I wonder if, I, if anybody is hearing me this morning. I wonder if anybody is seeing any similarities in our current global environment. I, I, I'll just repeat them quickly. A one world government, that is where we're heading. Mandatory idolatry. Some things are, are in, in the works, brethren. About mandatory things. An efficient system of reporting. I read in the news just yesterday that a system is being set up to be able to determine who is vaccinated from, who is not vaccinated. And we understand the implications of such a system. Mass compliance with evil and prideful leaders. The times, brothers and sisters, are progressing in a very serious direction, as is to be expected. But it is clear that the three Hebrew boys were able to be in the times and under the captivity in Babylon and under the system of oppression. But they found a way to be able to be faithful to the Lord in that trying context. And so that's what we're going to look at. Now before I continue, I understand that I mentioned the word vaccination and some people freaked out at that moment. I have a particular opinion on it that I can share outside of this message, okay? That's not the topic of our discussion, all right? There are things that the three Hebrew boys did, and I want us to be able to learn from it because this is, this is how I see the time period that we're in. This is a pop quiz for the church. Coronavirus is a pop quiz. It is, it is a pop-up test for the church. It is an opportunity for us to see if we are ready for what is to come. You know when they got Devon House, them used to allow if you be able to taste a, a piece of the ice cream and I want a little spoon. Them, them don't do that anymore, you know, can you imagine? Coronavirus, everything changed. This is what coronavirus is like compared to what is to, it's a taste and buy situation. So we have to know that we must be ready. We have to get to ourselves in order. We have to examine the texts, examine texts like this in, in situations similar to where we are and where we are headed to ensure that we are ready, that our faith in God stands in the trial, that we're able to trust the Lord even in great difficulty. And so when I look at this text, and this crazy situation of all these people bowing down. And all these people being okay with evil. Being okay and compliant with things that are against the word of God. Many Hebrews, I imagine thousands of Israelites bowing down. I ask myself, what made the three Hebrew boys stand? And I think the, the very first thing that stood out to me is their knowledge of God. Knowing God. In verse 16 and 17, they, they, they answer in such an interesting way. When the king asked them, you know, why aren't you bowing down? 
Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves in this matter. As if to say, oh, king, you know what the Jews believe. Maybe them pretending like them don't believe, but we believe. You know, this thing is settled already. You know that Jews, that Christians, we do not bow to any other God. We don't need to defend ourselves. Furthermore, our God is able to deliver us from your hand. And he will do it. Knowing God birthing, they knew God. Did. This is not the product of a passing acquaintance. Like, oh, Jesus, good to see you today. All right, big up yourself. This is the product of walking with God. It is a deep-seated confidence in the ability of God, the might of God, the power of God. I suppose, you know, the Jews are very reflective people, you know. They would routine, they read the scriptures out loud to one another and encourage each other. And it is suspected that even while they were in Babylon, they would have sang the songs of Habakkuk. You know, you know those songs in um, Habakkuk 3, beautiful. If you have a little time, look, look at what Habakkuk was actually saying in that context. And it is really an end times prophecy. But they, the Jews have a system of recollection. And that encouraged the, the, the passing on of their knowledge of God and what God had done. And so I imagine that probably that morning or that week or that month, they would have reflected again on the exodus from Egypt. They reflected on the writings in the Psalms. And there's one particular Psalm that kind of jumped into my mind when I, when I was looking at this situation. Such an interesting Psalm, Psalm 11. In this context, again, evil men abound. There's so much evil that someone advises David, you know. It's so interesting. So it says, in the Lord I take refuge. How then can you say to me? This is the advice that they're giving David in the context of trying times, in the context of trials. David is saying, how can they say to me? Flee like a bird to your mountain. For look, the wicked bend their bow. They set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows of their upright in heart. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? Can you imagine? In the context of a system being overtaken by evil, the advice that the people are giving David is run, flee like a bird. What can we do as righteous people? We just have to run. We just have to give up. And I love, I love David's heart. I love his heart. This is his reflection. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes the sons of men. His eyes examine them. The Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked and those who love violence, his soul hates. On the wicked, he will rain fiery coals and burning sulfur. A scorching wind will be their lot. For the Lord is righteous. He loves justice. Upright men will see his face. It is as though the Three Hebrew boys saw the fire flames, but knew that for the wicked, they are infinitely more fire flames. Be careful, brothers and sisters, about the encouragements that people try and give you in your time of trial. Telling you to flee like a bird, to ignore the person who have God in the situation. Just look at the situation alone. Forget about the fact that God sits on the throne. That is the advice that some of us get. We have to be careful. We have to fix our eyes on Jesus. And remind ourselves that he is on the throne. Even though it seems like Nebuchadnezzar is on the throne. Nebuchadnezzar is on a throne given permission by the king of kings to sit where he sits. And so we have the surpassing privilege, the amazing, amazing opportunity to know God. To know God. That is an anchor to the soul. 
Paul in his reflection about the value of knowing God said it's, it's, it's more than my education, it's more than my race, it's more than riches in Philippians 3. I consider everything dung compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing God. You see what happened? These, these three Hebrew boys, their job was in the balance. Their reputation was in the balance. Their lives were in the balance. But compared to knowing God, how can I pretend like I do not know God? How can I pretend to tie my shoelace when all of Israel is pretending that maybe that's what, maybe they rationalized it. Oh, they're not gonna, they're not gonna bow down. They're just gonna tie their, you understand? Maybe they found some way, but these three Hebrew boys said, I know God and I will love God and I will stand for God. I know him. Look at my God. I cannot even appear as if I am bowing down. I encourage us to get to know God, get to know the real God. In our, in our westernized culture, there is a disease that has taken over the church. That has changed even the personhood of God. Or so, it, so it would seem. They have made Jesus into some kind of little, little sissy. A little holy Santa Claus that you just say what you want and poof. Jesus just give you anything you want. They have changed the character of God from being in the context of the Old Testament to disappearing the Old Testament. Disappearing revelations and the epistles and leaving only the synoptic gospels. And then chopping up. Whole heap of parts of it, leaving only the tender, gentle Jesus. No, he is very gentle. And he's tender, but he's so much more. The knowledge of God in a holistic way will anchor the soul. Not just a partial, culturized view of God. A westernized view of God. But the true and living God, the same God that David reflect on, the same God that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego reflect on, the same God that the disciples reflect on when Peter was hung upside down, when Thomas was speared, when James was thrown off the, off the, the, the hill, and then his head bashed in. That God, that God. No, let us know that God. Because this little PR, PR understanding of who God is and who Jesus is, it will not last in the trials. We have to be clear. Because the enemy's goal is that the trial changes your understanding of who God is in a negative way. He wants to use a trial to kill your understanding of God. To say, if he can get you there, God doesn't even exist. Can you imagine? If he can get you that far, he will get you that far. Things are so hard, God doesn't even exist. But he wants to undermine your understanding of who God is with the trial. So let us be on guard. Knowing God, brethren, empowers us to trust him. To trust him in trying times. Now secondly, I would say the three Hebrew boys had an understanding of suffering. Which is also a challenge in the modern day church. They had a proper understanding of suffering. Right? So they knew about God's ability. Yes, he is strong and mighty. Some of us are there. We know about what God has done. We reflected on the Exodus. Reflected on so many things in the biblical context that God has done. We know that he's mighty and powerful. But we stop a bit shy. Because they said, even if he does not deliver us, like he's able to deliver us, and I know he will deliver us, they said, but even if he doesn't. Now this puts many of us in a crisis of faith. How can, this is what the devil says. How can a God who is all powerful. Who can deliver me. Let, let's put each of us in a situation. Can deliver me from the fire furnace. Doesn't want me to bow down to get away. But how can he have the power and allow me to burn. You understand? It's a serious question, this, you know? 
And this is everyday life. It's the same kind of question. Why do bad things happen to good It's the same kind of question. Why bad things happen to good people? Why bad things happen to Christians? We need to ground our understanding of suffering and even death in the word of God. The three Hebrew boys, this is what they communicated. Even if he does not deliver us, we will still love him. We will still serve him. We will still honor him. He is still good. Even if he doesn't do what I want. Even if he doesn't do what I think he should do. I am still loyal to God. Even in the context of him allowing me to die. Allowing me to be tortured. Even in the context, Job said, of him actually slaying me. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. It is a lost theology in the church that we need to hold it back. We need to pursue that. We need to get back there, brothers and sisters. Because the days are getting more and more evil. We need an understanding of the role of suffering in the life of the believer and even the role of death. So this is what the word of God says about death. Revelation 12 verse 11. They overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. I would love that part, you know. Woo, yeah, overcame by, yeah. But the next part, the next part, the next part, very important. They did not count their lives more valuable than death. What does that mean? They overcame by the blood of the Lamb, whatever the testimony, they did not count their lives more valuable. That means the end time church, in the context of Revelation 12, overcame through death, through enduring to the point of death. Now, that is a hard pill to swallow, I admit, I admit it. The biblical understanding and God's understanding of death is not our understanding of death. Death is not a final evil thing. Death is actually part of overcoming according to Revelation 12. And I take you further. 1 Corinthians 15. A powerful passage. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 55. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, when at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, oh, death is your sting. Where, oh, death is your victory. The Hebrew boy stood there in the highest possible trial. The potential for their death. And they reflected on the meaning of death for the believer. For thirdly, Psalm 116, verse 15. Precious, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Our, our trust wanes when we refuse to believe the word. When we refuse to hold on to it for what it is really saying. When we put our own ideas on it, our trust wanes. And it is weak and will not stand on the trials. This is what the word says. And they understood it. They understood it, brethren. And I will fire off some quickly on suffering. The role of suffering. Suffering is so important. Believers, all of us, all of us, Every believer is appointed certain specified types of suffering. It is God's gym for the believer. Anybody ever go to the gym? 
It's not a nice place. No, no, no. You might feel nice while you are there, but the following day or the day after that, you can't move your hand, you can't move your foot, bear pain. But you know that you are getting stronger. The three Hebrew boys had a biblical understanding of suffering. So I have six points here I'm going to tell you quickly. Suffering leads to a multiple, a multiple of glory. Romans 8, 18, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. Okay, you can check, these, check out these verses if you don't believe me. <laughs> the theology of suffering. Secondly, suffering is to be pursued and desired. Philippians 3 verse 10, Paul said, I want to know Christ. Yes, everybody, woo, know Christ. Secondly, the power of his resurrection. Of course, we want power. Yeah, power, woo. Thirdly, the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings. Philippians 3 10, check it out. More on it, look at it. Thirdly, Suffering is assigned to every believer. I said that earlier. Philippians 1.29. It is appointed for us not just to believe, but also to suffer. It's the truth. It don't sound good, it don't feel good, but it's true. And it's there for a reason. Number four. Suffering is a prerequisite for reigning with God. 2 Timothy 2.12. If we suffer with him, we will also reign with him. Point five, suffering is an indication that we are really his children. And this is Hebrews 12. It's a, it's a lovely passage, it's a lovely teaching on suffering right there. Right? God allows us to go through difficulty so that we can be made strong. And number six, same Hebrews 12, it's a lovely passage. Those who suffer... And endure hardship as discipline, yield a harvest of righteousness. A harvest of righteousness. Suffering is the crucible. It is the refining fire, brethren, that brings forth pure gold. And there are probably more than a dozen more scriptures I could have tell you. It's all over the Bible. But again, the Western church... We sanitize out the suffering part. How could I forget? I wrote it in my previous note, and I forget to transcribe it. Luke 9, 23. How could I forget? If any man follow me, he must deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. Suffering, then, is an everyday part of Christian life. If any man follow me, he must deny himself, pick up his cross daily, and follow me. And so, in the face of the trials, the three Hebrew boys could have reflected on the role of suffering in the life of the believer, the purpose of death in the life of the believer, and that strengthened them in the day of trial. Let me hear you say, Amen. So we have knowing God, understanding suffering. And the third thing that I would say that the Hebrew boys benefited from was following God. Following God in their previous experiences. Now what do I mean by that? You can say obeying God too. Implied in the text is that this is not the first time that they stood for righteousness. Right? It's not explicitly stated but we actually know that in Daniel chapter 1, the Hebrew boys, along with Daniel himself, were given food to eat that had been sacrificed to idols. And they refused. Daniel 1.8, Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine and asked the chief priest not to defile himself this way. Right? And then we know what happened. After 10 days of eating fruit and vegetables, they looked stronger and healthier than the other, the other guys. Right? Following God daily, in your daily experiences, in the, sometimes even in the mundane things, 
that might not seem to be a huge consequence. Your life is not at risk. Your job is not at risk. Nothing may even really be at risk that much. But you are faithful in that moment. That builds in you an anchor for the soul in a moment of trial. Because you have developed the habit of trusting God in difficulty. Walking by faith and trusting God in trying times takes practice. All we have to start somewhere. Imagine, and, and you will see that these three points, knowing God, understanding suffering, and following God, they are all intertwined, right? Because check this out. Imagine if David, when he was tending to the sheep, and the lion came and the bear came, him run away. Just imagine what would have happened. He would not have gotten the training, right? That is the suffering. Probably even get a couple of scars and things, you know, right? Suffering. And, the, and, the, and the, 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 the mental picture of that is also suffering, Right? Probably he would not have gotten the training. Probably he would have not gotten the confidence so that when the time came for the nation of Israel to be delivered because Goliath stood in the way, he would not have had that experience to bank on. We have to be faithful in the little things in our lives. Faithful were the three Hebrew boys in Daniel 1. David was faithful in the context with the lion and the bear. And that trusting God in those situations when nobody, when not many people were looking, that emboldened them. That when it reached the point of a national crisis, they had what it took to stand. David himself, under the waves of negative emotions. How many of us feel that sometimes? Waves. Sometimes they come in waves. Waves of discouragement. Waves of, of, of negative self-talk and all kinds of things. Yeah, man. Go through that from time to time. It's not nice. But David also went through it. And you know what he said? Why are you downcast, oh my soul? Why are you downcast? Put your hope in God. And he reflected on what God did at Mount Mizar. He reflected on the things that God did. And he encouraged his soul. See, so when you follow God, you have those things that you can remind yourself of. Remember that situation at work? It was not big of a deal, but I was faithful to the Lord and the Lord delivered me. Remember that time when the policeman stopped me and him said, beg your money. And I said, boss, sorry, me a Christian, me ticket. And the Lord came through. The Lord worked it out somehow. Or maybe you take the ticket and boy, you wish the Lord would deliver you. But it strengthened you in that moment. So that when them come for try to bribe you on the job now, you have already set up pulse in this, in this area. He wants you to shrink back every time. Every single time. Just shrink back, just be neutral, just chill. Shrink back from the test. Or he wants you that if you win, that you forget. Can you imagine? He's such a wretch. So sometimes when the Lord delivers us, and it is amazing. And you share a testimony for a week. But then three weeks down the line, you have faced something else, and it's coming like you have faced the first thing in your life. But it's not the first thing. It didn't reflect. You didn't remember what the Lord delivered you from. David had to remember the lion and the bear. And so I encourage some amount of journaling. Write down the things that God has done. What he did in 2015. I'm going to help you in 2022. But you have to remember. Follow God. 
and reflect on what he has done. Allow that to encourage your heart, brothers and sisters. In trying times, when we endure great trials, even when our lives are on the line, may our anchor hold. May our trust in the Lord hold. And may it manifest in the fruit of endurance. Long-suffering. I encourage us to pursue God in knowing God. To understand, take the time to understand and examine suffering in the Bible. And follow hard after God. Amen. Lord, you see the times that we are in. In many ways, Lord God, we lack strength. In many ways, Lord God, even in this taste and buy situation, this pop quiz situation, we find ourselves limping emotionally. Weak in the knees, Lord God. As the enemy seeks to shift our focus from you. Strengthen our hearts, Lord God. Cause, Lord God, that we will reflect on who you are. That we would know you and pursue you. That we would stand on the biblical understanding of suffering. And that we would develop the habits of following you in every season. Strengthen us, sustain us, empower us, Lord God. And do your mighty work of preparation as you seek to present your bride before you, a glorious bride, made ready for the return of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Shane is going to come and help to wrap the service, but it's obvious to me in my own soul and spirit that today is a day we need to touch God's altar. I'm going to have us sing again, Trust in the Lord. Pastor Shane will lead that as we go back to those songs. The altar is going to be open. We want you to say, today I've made up my mind. I'm going to know God. I'm going to be prepared for suffering. <clears throat> but I'll remember what God has done. I will pursue a life that has a track record of faithfulness. May that be our portion today. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean unto thine own understanding. is open for all who will come trust in the Lord trust in the Lord all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path let's just let's just pause for a second brothers and sisters we're living in unparalleled times unparalleled in one sense because we've we've never experienced anything like this before as individuals but also unparalleled because of how increasingly the enemy is turning up the flame of persecution I, I don't want anyone to leave believing that the the church is bawling about persecution it's it's something that the, that we are accustomed to but it's far greater than simply persecution that has come to us but it is persecution 
that has come upon humanity. And we've all had our, our, our own personal challenges, difficulties, not just in this hour, but in previous hours. And like the Hebrew boys, they, they had to decide on two occasions prior to this, at the least one, where they stood and they saw their lives and livelihoods being threatened by the king. And how they were encouraged by Daniel to seek the face of the Lord in the midst of these challenging times. No doubt it is in suffering that we know who we are at the core. And who God is as king. And so as we sing this song, may we sing it from the depths of our hearts. May we, whether seated or here at the altar connect with him in a more real way so that he may provide us with the strength needed in that time of challenge to stand firmly for him. As we go through this life, as we march confidently to the end, we will be challenged. We will be tested. Will we be found ready and strong in the midst of that challenge, saying, yes, we will stand for the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean on to thine own understanding. For in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. One more time, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. With all thine heart. And lean, and lean unto thine own understanding. But in all, but in all thy ways. Him, and he shall direct thy path. Father, we are grateful for the privilege of hearing your word and for the privilege of being in the land of the living. And Lord, in the midst of your sovereignty, you cause your people, both great and small, the different spheres of life to be tested at work or at play, at school. It's not just a Middle Eastern thing. It's not just a, a thing where we're found in dictatorial nations or nations that are communist in origin. It's now found even stronger in democratic countries, in the Western world. Freedoms, Lord, that we once enjoyed. Freedoms, Lord, that we cherished, you now being challenged in one way or the other. There are things that we considered unthinkable that would not and could not have happened in our lifetime. Lord, we now see happening. And, and, and we're, we're dazed by it. We're jaded by it. When certain questions are asked of us, when we hear leaders say things and respond in certain ways, and we wonder if if this is really our country, if, if this is really the world in the 21st century, when we would have thought that it was just a Christian thing, it, we see it being a, 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 a human thing. It's a global thing. Lord, our faith, for many, our faith is in crisis. Having been taught, Lord, at times that you will always deliver your people. Yet not, not thinking that deliverance could also come in the way of death. That deliverance could come by way of persecution. As the three Hebrew boys made it clear to the king, not in any way or sort of disrespect, but just affirming that our God can deliver. But even if he does not deliver, which it is his choice as sovereign ruler to do. 
we will stand firm for him. Because we have been taught clearly in your word that he will have and we should have no other gods but him. And so, Lord, we know that we have lost. We will lose friends and family, things we care about. But to what gain do we have if we, 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 we receive the whole world and the accolades of men and we lose your approval and our souls in the process? And so, Father, I present your people to you. And Lord, we thank you for Dr. Thomas and for his own family. They stand in the trenches with us and we with them. And we thank you for the organization that he leads and supports. And we stand in the trenches with them. We're fully aware, Lord, that you are with us. And you even said in your word that if they hate us and mistreat us, it is because they hated you first and mistreated you. And so, Lord, we, though bothered at times and though concerned at times, we care more about your glory and about your will being accomplished. Make our faith resolute, Lord. Help us, Lord, to stand up in the day of trial and trouble. They may not like what we have to say and the stance we've taken, but they must respect our love for you. And we pray, Lord, that you'll remember us in that time and deliver as only you can. And as we read in the psalm earlier today, that you provide for your people. You will stand with your people. So, Lord, we place our lives before you and bless us from the crowns of our heads to the soles of our feet. We pray, Lord, for that soul, our souls, as they do not know you as Savior, that call has been placed upon their lives for them to come, taste, and see that you're good. May they step forward with boldness and walk into your kingdom as you have opened the doors for them. Lord, we thank you for the song that is being played. And we've learned to depend upon your word. And we thank you for the word this morning as we sing. Through it all, through it all, through it all, I've learned. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned, I've learned to trust through it all. upon his one more time as we sing through it all yes lord through it all i've learned i've learned to trust i've learned i've learned to trust in god Lord, we have heard your word and we depend upon it and may it find good soil in our lives as you bless your manservant, as you bless your people. And Lord, as we briefly segue, I lift up his wife, Sister Thomas, to you. And Lord, his son, I pray that you bless them even now and that the encouragement we have received and the healing from your word that finds its way to our bones, that it will also find its way to them. Lord, we are not aware of what ails Sister Thomas, what you are. And I pray, Lord, that you bless her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. And that your Holy Spirit will continue to minister to her even now. And as her husband and son ministers to her, may she feel your presence. And may your hand be upon her for the good. We lift her up. We lift the Thomas family up to you. As we give you thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated.
It was good for us to have been in the house of the Lord today. We encourage you at this time to sit back and to await this morning's announcements. Orella Francis is coming to share those announcements with you. Good morning all. We are so thankful to God that we are able to have come into his house one more time. And of course, because of the lifting of the restrictions, many more of us are here this morning. And it's so good to see everyone who have been absent because we have been under severe restrictions. God continue to bless you all. I want to first of all thank our speaker this morning for sharing with us. Dr. Thomas, it's good to have you. There's a particular word that he brought to us this morning which I only have to agree with. And that is what it is that we are experiencing in this pandemic is but a dry run for what is to come. And all of us need to take note of that. The passage of scripture that he read from partially, because it's, I say partially because uh, Matthew 24 and into 25 contain, contains a lot of prophecy um, in answer to that question that the disciples asked Jesus Christ on that mountain. But it is for us a dry run, what we are experiencing and what we are seeing. Not necessarily the, the virus I'm talking about, but the reaction to it. It is but a dry run of what, to, what is to come. So let us pray one for the other. Um, we are going to, as I share the announcements with you, I'm going to, just going to ask you to come and to place your offering and your tithes in the receptacle that has been provided and that is in the middle. Um, we, as Pastor said last week, Sunday after service, we want to thank the saints for their giving. And we certainly are appreciated appreciative of it. So as I share the announcements, I just ask you to come and just to do what the Lord has laid upon your heart. I want us to remember, please let us remember those persons who have suffered loss in this time. This is a unique time, not just because of the virus. It is unique because people who are, have suffered loss they are unable to mourn as we would normally mourn our dead. I've had the opportunity to go to two funeral services this last week. It was amazing. On one occasion, we were at a, a funeral home for the viewing, and because of the restrictions, they had to ask some of us who were seated in the viewing room to exit so that those who came later on could come and view the body because only 15 of us were allowed in the room at any one time. Even though the room could hold probably 30 or 50. All right? But, and you can just imagine what the Nelson family and what the Brown family and all those others who have suffered loss have gone through and are going through because they are unable to mourn and we are unable to draw alongside them and to share with them and to just to hug them and to, to, to show the love that we would want to show. We are unable to do it. So please let us remember them and to pray for them that God would indeed comfort them and touch them in their, and touch them in their hearts and just to, just to bring closure at this very difficult time. I want to remind you as well that our prayer meeting will take place on Tuesday evening, starting at 6.30, and then our Bible study will be on Wednesday. And on Wednesday, 
we continue, and this is the second week of it. We broke last week because of the AJ United prayer meeting. On Wednesday evening, we will continue the study of the book of Jeremiah. I encourage everyone, I encourage everyone just to, just to read from ver, cha, not verse, chapter 1 through to 5 as we prepare to go back into that book. Um, there are some things that we shared the first time around, which we'll quickly go through, and there are some other things that I'll share with you as we continue this study of this very deep and prophetic book. We continue to remember um, our elder Andrew Edwards and his wife, Sister Pat. They, are, they went off to see their daughter Jillian this morning, and Jillian will be having her birthday, I think it's the 6th of October, don't hold me to the date. And so they have gone to spend time with her in Chicago. Remember them in your prayer that God will continue to grant them traveling mercies. God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon. Pastor Shane, over to you. Thank you, Elder Francis. Much to consider, but indeed God is able and he's still with his people in spite of what, how we may feel and what we may think of the times, never lose your faith and your trust in God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Shall we stand for the benediction? Let's sing praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. God bless you richly, those of you by the World Wide Web. Thank you for joining us. God bless you richly. Enjoy the rest of your day. Brothers and sisters, we know the drill. Get home safely and continue to worship the Lord. Amen. How you are doing, but I already know.